Hello everyone, welcome to the part of the Clown Decade where things get way worse before they get better. And today we are talking about what has to be one of the best examples of a left-wing conspiracy theory that, because it comes from the left-wing, quite a lot of people end up buying. And it ends up getting in national media and portrayed as almost true. Naturally, for those of you already slightly aware of Twitter over the past 24 hours, you will already know what this story is about. And for those of you that have not caught up, I'm just going to answer the question straight away. No, reform have not been using and fielding fake candidates. There's no evidence for it whatsoever, but it doesn't really matter. The Guardian will still put out complete and utter fake news like this. Reform UK under pressure to prove all its candidates were real people. Doubt raised about election hopefuls who stood without providing photos, biographies or contact details. And details of that we will get into later, but as you can see on the screen, yes, this is actually an AI generated image of the reform candidate for Clapham. And again, there's a number of reasons that people may use AI generated images of themselves for their campaign. One of the main reasons is probably because you know, it's free and manages to make it look very professional. However, I want to bring your attention to the tagline. Mark Matlock was initially suspected of being fake in part due to his election photo looking AI generated. Well, it was AI generated, but turned out to be a real person. So <laughs> this is the Guardian hiding behind the wall of we're just asking questions, bro, while trying to run this narrative of there were actually fake candidates for the Reform Party, despite there being absolutely no evidence whatsoever. And as we will go through, this has caused the conspiracy theory to spread onto Twitter. And given that these are the type of people that want conspiracy theorists banned off the platform, I hope that Elon Musk grants their wish. Reform UK has come under pressure to provide evidence its candidates at the general election were all real people after doubts were raised about a series of hopefuls who stood without providing any photos, biographies or contact details. Again, we'll get into why it's really stupid, especially to just focus on reform on that, but why it's stupid to say, oh, there's no photo, biography or contact details. I mean, most of the time there is contact details, by the way, anyway, but why it's stupid to focus on it. Reform insists every one of its 609 candidates on 4 July were real, while accepting that some were in effect paper candidates who did no campaigning and were there simply to increase the party's vote share. So for those of you wondering, a paper candidate is effectively someone, a real person by the way, who they put on the ballot paper just to have a Reform UK option for constituencies where they have absolutely no chance of winning. This is particularly popular for reform in area big big city areas in general really you know areas like london especially but a lot of scotland big city areas of wales and northern england as well and as we say they put them in there simply so there's an option for people to tick, uh, put an x next to the reform uk candidate so they do absolutely no campaigning whatsoever because what's the point? Why waste resources, money and time on it? They're not going to win anyway. However, after seeing details about the apparently complete lack of information about some candidates who The Guardian is not naming, <laughs> the Lib Dems called on reform to provide details about them. The Guardian is not naming these people we're accusing of being fake people. Why aren't you naming them? It, it, is it because you can get in legal trouble for being libelous against reform? And if you name them, then that puts you in hot water. Is it because you know this is fake news? This is taking me back to when I replied to Philosophy Tube. And at the start of the video, Philosophy Tube says, oh, a man stole my work. I'm not going to go into any details on it because I'm worried about libel laws. Now, due to having to go through some libel court documentation, I know a bit about libel law in the UK, and as long as you're telling the truth, you have a very, very good defence against being sued for libel. In other words, if you say, I don't want to go into details on this because I'm worried about being sued, then you are probably lying. And this is The Guardian admitting that effectively, yes, this is fake news. Anyway, they... <laughs> They use a Liberal Democrat source that said, this doesn't sound right and reform should come clean with evidence. We need reform to show who they are. People need to have faith in the democratic process. Now, I'm not being funny, but it is completely normal to have paper candidates. It is completely normal to have people standing in areas where they don't expect to win, but don't 
also put much effort into campaigning to the point where, yes, they don't put photos, biographies or contact details in because what's the point? They'll probably get about 500 votes, if that. Anyway, an example that I have found of Reform UK using someone with no biography, picture or any of the other stuff that they are demanding. I, I looked at Peckham's candidate list. Obviously, we have Linda Purcell for Reform UK, who got 1,790 votes. This was in a constituency where Labour were obviously going to win and did win. By, by gaining over 22,000 votes. So yes, this was a paper candidate. But actually, if you look down the list, obviously you have an independent with a picture there. But then the Workers' Revolutionary Party has no picture and no bio. Alex Kerr, Rejoin EU, who I think had an address in Brussels, by the way, also had no picture and no bio. It's, it's crazy that Reform UK are the only ones being questioned on this when there were clearly other parties falling into the perfectly reasonable strategy of putting down paper candidates. And even going into the detailed page for Linda Purcell, yes, there is no bio. Yes, the contact email for Linda Purcell is just a completely generic peckham at reformuk.com email address. This is clearly someone who literally just said, yes, you can put my name down on the ballot paper, I support Reform UK, but I'm not going to do any campaigning whatsoever because there's absolutely no point it's a waste of my time and resources to try and campaign in an area where Labour are obviously going to dominate. This is a completely common tactic for smaller parties even the Liberal Democrats have done this in the past. It is absolutely crazy to bring the hammer down on Reform UK in this way when this is a perfectly normal campaign tactic. There is absolutely no evidence whatsoever that Linda Purcell does not exist as a person and just saying there's no photo or biography is nowhere near good enough to say that she doesn't exist because, as I say, this is something that has been done in absolutely every election since the dawn of time. Anyway, back to The Guardian. Under electoral rules, the only details that need to be given about the candidate is their full name and the constituency where they live. They must all have an agent and be nominated by 10 local voters. So, in other words, there were all of these safeguards in place to make sure that actually the person who is being put on the electoral register is real. And also when it comes to the agent, one of the Reform UK candidates who actually won, one of the five who obviously weren't the big three, had to use their parents as an agent. And again, the point of this is to prove that they are real. This is all in place to make sure that everyone on that ballot paper is a real person. With some of the reform candidates, it's not clear if they are listed on the electoral register for the area in which they are standing, which in a few cases is hundreds of miles away from the constituency in question. One person with the same name and location of a candidate denied it was them, which is about as close they got to proving that this was a fake candidate, but then immediately say, while there is no evidence of any of the candidates are fake, if that turned out to be true, it would be a serious electoral offence. This is what I mean by the Guardian are using the we're just asking questions bro defence. This isn't investigative journalism, this is reporting on gossip. But gossip again that they can't actually make any conclusive statements on, because then they would be sued by Richard Tice and Nigel Farage. Reform was keen to win as a bigger share of the national vote as possible, which is helped by a full slate of candidates. Some of the seemingly invisible candidates won several thousands of votes. Yes, Nigel Farage was pretty clear that he really only had plans for himself and at least Richard Tice to win in their constituencies. Everyone else was literally just there for the vote share. This is what he was saying everywhere. This is a long-term project. This is to say, we're going to get in Parliament, make our arguments, and then in a few years' time we'll be better prepared and hopefully do a hell of a lot better in the election, be the opposition, or with any luck, be the government. But this is just how ridiculous The Guardian have gotten. It's been, what, five days since the election? Three working days? Not even two when this was published, by the way. And already they are having to bring out both barrels to try and shoot down reform. This is, by the way, why I say, actually, this Labour landslide's a bit of a white pill. One, Labour are going to get, you know, that they're too big. The same thing happened with Boris. There's a hell of a lot of new talent. There's going to be way too much infighting. And eventually that is going to cause massive cracks in the government. Obviously, it's been three days. We'd be lucky to see anything close to that at the moment. But I've been saying it for quite a while on Twitter, and I've said it in the last video. I don't even think they're going to last the whole term. I reckon we'll have another general election in three years' time. 
in 2027 or 2028 because people are going to get fed up of seeing Labour effectively run into the exact same problems as the Tories because they don't have a plan outside of the economic orthodoxy that Rishi Sunak was put into power to keep moving. Anyway, let's stay on topic here. Obviously, with The Guardian posting out this article, an awful lot of the big-brained, sensible centre-leftists were out in force saying, oh my god, reform need to go to jail. Otto English, big brain leftist in chief, tweeted, this is absolutely insane, not least because the photo looks so much like Musk. So, uh, apparently, uh, he doesn't really go into detail here of what the insanity is. He has another tweet underneath saying, it seems he's real, but now he's lost, he really could make a living as a celebrity double. So to be clear, this is Otto English at first saying, oh look, we have fake candidates in the Reform Party to immediately say, oh actually, he, he is real, uh, just ignore that. I'm clearly just actually making a joke about the fact he looks a bit like Elon Musk. It, it's really, really snide because pretty much everyone knows that corrections and clarifications in a completely separate tweet are going to be completely ignored by people. You can tell simply by the likes. 75 likes for the correction of, no, he's not <laughs> he's not a fake candidate. Whereas there are 605 and over 67,000 views on the implication that actually this is a fake candidate. Blades of Sun, a very socially acceptable left-wing conspiracy theorist account, says Reform UK appear to have fielded a fake candidate made with AI, Mark Matlock. Looking at his hair, it's AI generated. It is a crime to field fake candidates and must be investigated immediately. 13,000 likes, 3.3 thousand retweets. So to be fair, some of them are probably quote tweets saying, wow, you're an idiot, he's real. But it just goes to show left-wing conspiracy theories, completely socially acceptable. Nobody complains about them really. It manages to get on mainstream news. And this story gets worse, by the way. Because in reply to this tweet, Camillo, who is someone that I can guarantee does actually exist, and apparently lived in Clapham, said, This is defamation. Mark is a pillar of the community, is well known in Clapham and Brixton Hill. We used to play football in Clapham Common. Please delete. And naturally, there's a reply calling him a... Uh, effectively calling him as well a completely made up and fake person. And uh, yeah, guess what? It does turn out this is entirely fake news. Thanks to GB News, who actually decided to get in contact with Mark and get him on for a quick chat. Uh, you know what? I've spoken to many journalists, and right. I have to say, you know, to their credit, a lot of them have been truly wonderful, magnificent people who've understood my situation. I mean, I'd love to see the people that made the articles saying, actually, this guy's real, but uh, they're hard to come by because The Guardian and other fake news sites are coming out saying, oh, did you know that reform are being investigated for putting forward fake candidates? Amazing. You know, there have been a few who've, who've used this opportunity to make headline news, and I call it fake news. You know, there's a massive agenda that's out to get our party, and they've used this opportunity to do so. But look, you know, they're not all bad people. I mean, you get the point with that. The guy is literally just a normal dude who wanted to join Reform and stand as a candidate. He's literally just a normal guy. And as he says, yes, some journalists actually saw this story and said, hmm, maybe I should check if he's real first. But he then also, of course, says, you know, people like Annie will be inferring The Guardian decided I'm not going to bother even trying to contact him. I'm just going to run the story. And that's the agenda driven pieces that we saw at the start of the video. And obviously the guy is just really normal. Here is a little clip he put on Twitter that I've had to mute because of copyrighted music, where he is literally just making fun of the leftist rags that decided to try and imply he's a fake person. I mean, he's literally just proving that he's not a fake person. What a guy. Anyway, this didn't stop idiots, once again like Otto English, from saying, I suppose Reform UK could just dispel those myths about fake candidates by asking the candidates to post brief videos proving they exist. There you go, problem solved, we can all move on. Genuine suggestion, by the way. This is complete nonsense, by the way, from Otto English. It doesn't matter what Reform UK do, he will keep pushing conspiracy theories. Nothing will be good enough for him to say, actually, they are genuine people with genuine concerns that I should respect. So don't do anything that Otto English suggests because the man is possibly the worst man in Britain at the moment. You know, that's obviously hyperbole. I don't think he's quite on the murderer level of things, but he is certainly one of the worst people on Twitter. Because this morning after it was obviously proven without doubt that it was complete fake news, Otto English 
Reply to someone saying that this was obviously a coordinated attempt to delegitimize Reform UK. Otto English says, mate, even the candidate admits that they used AI on this one. Don't you want to be certain you're voting for real people? Which again has nothing to do with the issue. Lots of people have used AI pictures of themselves, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's again for promotional material for themselves. Of course it was going to end up on Twitter for candidates who were standing for smaller parties. Of course it was going to happen. But again, this type of over-the-top scrutiny that people are masquerading as journalism, it's not applied to anyone else. As I said at the beginning, rejoin EU. Absolutely no information on that candidate whatsoever apart from his name. Nothing like this level of scrutiny for him. Workers' Revolutionary Party, same thing. Nothing compares to it. Because they're left-wing, so we don't need to scrutinise them. If they're right-wing, they're fascist, evil, and therefore we need to give them the least charitable interpretation that we can and make sure that they get nowhere near power, because that's democracy. But this is what I mean, though. Otto English, last night, saying, oh, just post videos of all these candidates, that'll dispel the myth. This morning, they used AI candidates. Don't you want to be sure they're real? It's evil to use AI, you know. You can't win, so don't even bother trying. Anyway, this fake news became so mainstream. I mean, it wasn't bad enough that The Guardian were implying that there were fake candidates. Richard Tice was directly asked on mainstream political interviews about the issue. As if, again, Reform are the only people who have put up paper candidates with barely any information about them. As if... I, I would I would doubt they are the only party who have had candidates who used AI images of themselves. It's a level of faux scrutiny that I don't think I've seen in my life. This is a complete non-issue. The electoral register has safeguards in the way to make sure that fake candidates are not put up, to make sure that everyone on that list is a real person. And sure, if they've been lied to about these candidates, fine, investigate that. But we have absolutely no evidence that they are fake. None whatsoever. This is completely normal in the British electoral system, but all of a sudden in, uh, reform gets involved with it, and all of a sudden it's the biggest issue known to man. Complete left-wing conspiracy theorists running absolutely rampant, and obviously it was seen as important enough for Robert Peston to ask Richard Tice in this clip. Here is Tice's, quite frankly, reasonable response. To that this is a total fabricated lie that is nothing short of defamatory, libelous, and utterly outrageous. Completely fair. As, as I've said over and over again in this video, I, I've said it to death, it is completely normal to put down paper candidates with barely any information about them because they are just there to help with the national vote share. Not having information beyond a name it is not reason to believe that they are fake. Otherwise, the electoral system, <laughs> as it has existed throughout time needs to be questioned. We've proved it to people like them and The Guardian and still they print this utter trash and garbage. I'm steaming mad about it. And I would be too because this is effectively calling Reform UK once again total liars and once again it is a complete attack on their credibility. Enough so that I would not blame him if he sues them. Unfortunately, they do have enough for S.H.I.E.L.D. to say that they're not lying because they haven't claimed that they are fake candidates. They are, again, just reporting gossip. Oh, some people are saying that they need to be investigated. Oh, some people are saying that they might be fake. Which, to me, is the slimiest bit of journalism that you can ever have because most people will read the headline and say, oh, Reform have probably put up fake candidates. That's bad. And that's how this is spread to Peston having to ask Tice about it. To suggest that we put forward false names and candidates, one of them was in hospital at the count with pneumonia, nearly died for heaven's sake. These people need to get a grip. Again, this is basic investigative journalism that places like The Guardian should have done if they were worried about this, but they're not worried about it. They don't care. They're just putting, out it, putting it out, putting out this gossip, this conspiracy in the news to try and give it legitimacy. That is all they are trying to do. It's pathetic and I hope that they do at least try and pursue some legal action because there's got to be some way to fight back against this. And even if, with the fact that those accused of being fake have proved themselves not to be fake, with the evidence that people missing from the vote count were actually in hospital nearly dying of pneumonia, it's not good enough for the high-status left-wing conspiracy theorists, the FBPE types, 
who say, oh, Dickey reacts to accusations by Lib Dems, not just Lib Dems, but most of the left-wing establishment, that some of Reform's candidates weren't real people. But I'm not going to provide evidence, obviously. That's, he's, quote, trying to imply that Richard Tice is a liar once again. Again, though, there have been evidence. There's been plenty of evidence. It's been debunked as fake news immediately, almost immediately. It took GB News half a day to find the guy they were all accusing of being fake. Why couldn't other journalists do it? But then when it's become absolutely irrefutable that all this has been fake news, the goalposts immediately shift. While Tice rages about defamation, which it absolutely is, he should remember that Farage admitted there was no proper vetting of the candidates. And this is a matter of high public interest and therefore has a public interest defence, given reformers seeking public short money dependence on votes cast. In other words, and this is the thing I hate about libel laws in the UK, but I suppose there's good reason for it, yes, you can actually use, oh, there was a public interest in us reporting on this gossip as reason to basically lie about people. Now, the thing is, is that this can actually fail, as it did with Carol Cadwallader, the Guardian journalist, who said that, uh, what's he called, Aaron Banks had connection and ties to the Russian oligarchy. Aaron Banks took her to court. She never even tried to use the I was telling the truth defence, which I think tells you everything and then try to move on to the public interest defence. And it didn't particularly work because there is actually no public interest whatsoever in lying about your political opponents. So if this does actually go to court, I don't even think that this is going to be a good defence. Because the public interest defence isn't, oh, Farage said that there was no proper vetting of candidates, therefore some of them might be fake, therefore it's okay for us to put out barefaced lies. Despite the fact, again, as I say, it took GB News half a day to find the guy. If there was absolutely no effort whatsoever into actually trying to find out if these candidates are fake or not, then you can't use public interest defence because you didn't have the public interest at heart. You had an attack on your political enemy at heart and that absolutely is not protected by defamation law. But again, I absolutely love it. Peter Jukes here is not saying, oh, the Guardian should use the we told the truth defence because they lied. If you are saying I am using other technicalities in defamation law to not get sued, you may as well just have a big neon sign above your head saying I am a liar. And this is exactly what the left-wing journalist class have been doing for years. And it's all coming out in droves thanks to reform because they are panicking. And they are panicking because they know reform is going to grow for the next election. They know reform now has pure legitimacy because they have more seats than the Greens in Parliament and they are probably going to end up on television a lot more in these interviews than the Tories because who cares about the Tories? It appears that they're trying to go even more Lib Dem after this complete annihilation in the polls despite the fact that everyone keeps telling them no we don't want Lib Dems but in blue we want reform but in darker blue. Anyway as you can tell it took a whole three days after the election if that for these media to go full on fake news against Reform UK. This is only going to get worse, by the way, which is kind of a good thing. If this is going to be the peak of their lying, as in the least questionable lie that they have told, then it's only going to mean a lot more entertaining fake news is going to be put forward. Tyson and Farage seem to be pretty good at dispelling fake news quite quickly. If they massively focus on PR, then they will do pretty well in the coming years and hopefully grow their support by the next election, which, as I say, 2027. For now, though, I am still a Tory member. I am going to stay as a Tory member until the next leadership election. And if it looks like they really are going the we need to be more like the Lib Dem route, I am cutting up that card, rejecting my membership, revoking it even, and I'm going to look at joining reform. That is the threat I am, I guess, I'm making to the Tories. And again, I don't think they care. They didn't seem to care too much when I was asking if I can help canvas for them, if I can volunteer for them. I got absolutely nothing back, but oh, what you can do is just toss us another fiver. I, I'm not being funny. If I'm offering my time, I'm definitely not going to just offer you money. Anyway, with that, that is everything I had for you today. So once again, thank you very much for watching. In terms of shilling, obviously, there is the other side of the Hill newscast tonight. Obviously, we'll be covering pretty much nothing but the election. Tomorrow, I'll be re on regional variations, and it will be 
the last one for a short while because Tail Feature is going on a small break from streaming for a bit. Don't worry, it will be returning in the near future, but do catch me on that where, again, I think we'll be talking about the election. And obviously, I will be putting out more video content as time goes on. Obviously, with the election just having rolled through, there's an awful lot more to talk about. There's a lot that is uh, boiling my blood quite a bit, so I imagine that uh, <laughs> the, the tone of these videos will be me slowly losing my mind. So, uh, yeah, enjoy all that. Right, but as I said, that's everything I had for you today. So once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.